welcome Facebook. You should be able to see us even though you're way far away. Do you see us? You hear us. <laughs> yeah. That's the, the quality of uh, craftsmanship you, ship you get live. Easy there, Joe. <laughs> it's the family show. Was that intentional or us? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Service Monster Podcast. My name is Joe Kowalski. I am your host. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the pain that I've went through as a business owner and this whole mobile platform thing. I'm going to talk about Mobile 3, talking about Technician, and the upcoming Mobile Pro. But before we get to that, let's do some housekeeping. Adam, what do we got to talk about today? Well, there was one quick hot fix that came out on, I believe, Wednesday about the uh, totals that were showing when the last update came out. The totals weren't showing on the deck. Um, pretty major thing. The uh, development team made a major focus on that. Hot fix came out, so those totals were back in there. Um, Development-wise, that's about the only thing I have. Um, I did want to say, though, hope everyone had a great week and they were excited to see Michael and that we're probably gonna have that lookout for those other guest appearances coming up. Yeah, some um, internal staff, and then also I'm gonna, I'll get Jay to come on and we'll talk, and other cleaners who've run you know, successful businesses, we'll, we'll tap into our horsepower a little bit and uh, bring uh, maybe some vendors too. So if you're interested in our local, if you're in Washington and don't mind a drive, uh, hit me up on Messenger and uh, we'll see if we can get you in if you have something important or cool to say. Yeah. So with that, I think we can jump right into Smug. And I started off with a little bit of a silly thing. Um, when when Brian Kirk, um, his first post basically when he, he came back in here was of these ridiculous socks. Um, talking how are about, they, I'm, I'm just, how are they ridiculous? Well, I mean, that's not a normal sock. I mean, I don't know about, uh, nor, normal socks either, either white <laughs> or black. I got Christmas socks in the summer. So I'm just trying to find out what the barometer of of crazy. I mean, obviously he thought it was. And Brian, you ain't getting away with nothing. I saw you post this on like 10 different things trying to get a <laughs> meme made. And so, but yeah, no, I, you know, I, I'm just trying to figure out what the, how do you determine a silly sock? Well, I can tell you that I wore my silly socks today in support of him. Um, they're actually Call of Duty socks, which I still can't <laughs> believe is a thing that got made. <laughs> uh, they randomly sent it to me when I got the crazy advanced whatever version. But uh, we'll, we'll, that, we'll, that was the swag they that, sent, the that, socks. Yep, socks. Well, isn't so. that a thing, though, in the military? I, we'd have to pull some of our uh, vets that I don't know if Aaron or Randy are over there, but like keeping taking care of your feet. See, maybe that because it's a thing, be, be, because the game is about that military. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when you're if you're not taking care of your feet, you're pretty much host. Well, the socks are pretty amazing. Um, we probably spent enough time on this as it is, but uh, we'll have a nice picture of these on there for you guys if you're interested. I promise. Thanks for the good in stuff. inspiration, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as real uh, stuff goes, uh, Jarrell had posted about, uh, last week we talked about the weekly totals and kind of uh, the discussion about having that on the schedule um, for like a revenue tracker. And he took it one step further this week talking about um, – estimates, uh, certain job types and things like that. Yeah, well, coming into question, the calculation, like how do we get the totals? Yep. And the totals right now, I think are just, if it's a job and it just adds up all of the orders for all of the jobs on the schedule for that route, plugs it into the top and then totals those for your daily total and off you go. Obviously, because we're much more flexible than other products um, and we allow for multiple jobs per order, it starts to get weird drop-offs, pickups, estimates, um, and then job type or order type. Both yep. of those play into the role as well. And so if it's an estimate, should we count it as income or wait until it's either invoiced or converted into a work order? And so this is a discussion they had. And I, I tried to look for the best GIF as a response for how much I love this discussion, but I failed. So I moved on. <laughs> but... Seriously, like the conversation sounded very much like the conversations we have here in meetings, especially production meetings, when we're trying to hash this out. But instead of us pretending to be you, you just were you. Yep. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I, I really like the approach. The question I have is, 
if we change it, is it at scale? We have a thing here where if it's too difficult to explain in a few sentences over the phone with somebody, then we built the feature wrong. And so the few sentence here is, oh, it's just a total of all your orders on the schedule. So it's easy to explain. It's easy to understand. You don't question it. When we start messing with those totals, when you show up and you have estimates on the schedule, but there's zero dollars at the top, you're going to go, what the hell? I don't know. Why is it zero? Well, it's because the majority thought that it would be a good idea. And so we play here with majority versus configuration versus complication versus simplicity. And that's our job. So looking at this, I'm like, yes, I agree. It needs a rework. What does that look like at the end of the day? I don't know yet. Is it configurable? Or do we just say number of jobs that say work divided by the total invoice? And that's the representation of the amount applied to that calculation. If you followed me through that <laughs> arc there, <laughs> I do that sometimes. I'll run a long arc and I, I hope people kept up. So yeah, so thanks for the discussion um, and, and continue it on and it will be used as, uh, it'll be weaponized for future discussions around the product table. Yep, exactly. Uh, yep. The next thing that came from Tim, um, speaking of rework, he was asking kind of how to track the amount of rework certain people because he felt like some of his customers were abusing his policy. Um, Brenda mentioned a couple of reports that were in there. And so I guess I just kind of want to get that out there that if people aren't aware necessarily that we have a couple of reports. I don't want to go super in depth on that, but really just kind of letting people know if you're trying to do change or view that rework, we have a job list. You don't have to see the schedule in that calendar format. You can use the job list. Good point. And really what I wanted you to maybe mention are those custom views. Now, this is a difficult one because training wise, but I don't think people realize how customized you can make those lists, those grid views. Oh, God. To find. There's no way we could do that on a podcast. No, but I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna do you one better. I'm going to shoot a quick video um, before this podcast yes. hits video so that people can have, have something seen, to reference. I've done one early. I've done a few early grid explanation videos. So you might want to look at those, but um, yeah, no, I, I think that's great. They, they're ridiculous. The only problem I have pushing them, those are not sticky right now. No, I mean like, like the custom views that you can build that stick on the drop down. Oh yes. Those are cool. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do a whole bunch of filtering on your data and have those as default. Yep. So what I'm talking about, not sticky is like columns, custom columns and column widths, something that we'll be putting in here shortly, but as of right now, they're not, but yeah, you can create your own filter against your database and come up with pretty cool lists. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like creating your own kind of customer report. report. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and Adam's right. And I want to point it out, point it out, point it out. You can see a job list in a grid and like filter and shit. Like you don't have to see it in the schedule form. So if you look in the sub menus under schedule, there's a jobs list there. Yep. So I would encourage you to, to pick that up. And then the yeah, other reports showing things like, uh, technician efficiency and rework schedules. There's stuff like that. There's nothing necessarily from like, give me my client list ordered by how many times they've asked for a rework, which is kind of what he was asking. Yep. Cause he wants to find his uh, bad performing customers. But you know, I, Tim, I would just approach that. Like, unless you feel like it's a big problem and then maybe you have a policy issue, you have an expectation issue, you something's going on. But if you have ones or two customers that you feel, are, you can fire them, right? Or when they come up, you can kind of look at the history. Um, so looking at your bad boy list to preemptively act, I don't think is uh, the best use of your time. You could you'd be out making money in a different way. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So the last thing from Smug here comes from David asking about uh, Stripe with the Technician app. Um, he was asking uh, personally about just taking payment in general with the the swipe, right? And you kind of went into depth about the you know scanning it, and whatnot. So I just thought it'd be a good time to kind of bring that forward. A lot of people might not know you can scan the card to kind of save yourself time. Yeah, I think it's pretty apparent though in technician. I mean yep. that scan thing just pops right up when you right. want to take your card, um, and that works ninety nine percent of the time. 
I haven't really heard too many people complaining about not taking it, although I'm, as I understand it, for security reasons, some of the cards are now coming without numbers on the front. Yep. Which is weird. Or that it's um, printed on there in such a way where it's hard to scan intentionally. It's very camouflaged, yeah. Yeah. You can only see it from directly. Right. And then in that case, you know, you key it in. Um, As far as getting the swipe or the chip reader um, from Stripe to talk to Service Monster directly, um, we've certainly talked about it. Uh, We've had requests for it. I haven't moved it up the pipeline because it's not easy tech, right? You think it's just like you pop this thing in. Well, that's an external device, and then that ships data to the OS, and then the OS needs to communicate with our app, and there's kind of a firewall there. What we can reach into the OS, it needs to hand us stuff. And so I'm sure there's some ways that we can integrate that together, but I haven't had engineers dive into the Stripe spec because that's where we'd go, right? We'd start with that. How do we use your dongles uh, in our app in order to process payment through your gateway? Yep. Which is the the do si do we need to dance there. So so it's not as easy as it would seem. Um, I, I certainly want to do it. And then it's probably only going to be for certain vendors with certain options, right? Um, because we do support a large number of merchants, almost unlimited, through the – and we need to do a podcast on credit cards. But just to say we have Stripe, which is both a gateway and a merchant, and Authorize, which is not just a gateway and a merchant. It is also just a gateway, yep. which provides you access to thousands of merchants, including but not limited to, most probably, your bank. So – a little tip there. People are like, oh, you only work with Authorize.net. Only? It's like thousands of merchants. Yep. What we don't do is force a specific credit card merchant down your throat without your knowledge and skim some percentage points off the top because we processed $500 million in invoices last year. And for every VC that contacts us, that's their main goal. Because they make pure profit $12,000 per million on those transactions when they set themselves up as a merchant or establish a relationship with a merchant where they get to skim off the top. And if their volume is big enough, they get good rates too. So to that front, it's cool. But to not give you the option, that's just not our style. So we give you guys options. More payment options will be coming as well. Stripe has PayPal. I don't know if you can set that up to take through the gateway, which kind of gets weird. That gets into a whole kaleidoscope effect. So I'd be interested to see what our developers dig up there. Um, You know, but then PayPal directly or uh, Square is another big one that we want to take a look at, right? Those are payment options that we can snap in because that's how we built the tech. We didn't build this one stream so that it's a revenue generator for us. I didn't go off into credit cards enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's actually a good idea. I wrote that wrote that down there. So um, that's the last the smug post I had in there. You know, thanks as always for the collaboration. Like it's really really great stuff. Um, and this is actually a great segue for what we're talking about. So we're talking about the technician app. Technically, we're talking more about the credit card processing, but um, and what our feature focus is of, of the week. So if you want to beep beep beep. Make the noise. Um, Partial, yeah, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. 